Hey, welcome back. I'm Jen Woodhouse, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I dressed up our staircase by installing this beautiful stair runner. It was a pretty straightforward and simple DIY project that took about a weekend to complete. About a year ago, we renovated our staircase because the previous one was dated and it was time for an upgrade. There was also a strange carpet to hardwood transition that would trip us up every time. So the staircase renovation was one of the first projects we tackled in this house. We replaced the stair treads, the railings, newel posts, and balusters, and I love how it turned out, but it was always my plan to install a stair runner as well to minimize the noise as well as the risk of slipping. We also have an 11-year-old, 100-pound Rhodesian Ridgeback named Watson who is starting to lose some mobility in his back leg, so going up and down the hardwood stairs was getting pretty scary for him and for me. We have another staircase that goes down to the basement and Watson has no issues whatsoever going up and down those stairs because they're carpeted. By the way, if you want to see our awesome basement home theater, I will link the video below. On the hardwood stairs, however, he's really trepidatious, so it's my hope that installing a stair runner will give him more traction and make him feel more confident on the staircase. Before we jump into this tutorial, tell me in the comments if you are team stair runner or team hardwoods. The wood has been unfinished for over a year and the stairs were looking pretty grimy from the daily foot traffic, so I sanded everything down with 120 grit sandpaper. All right, I just spent the last 30 minutes sanding the stair treads and everything looks brand new again. Let me give you a closer look. You can see the drips and the scuff marks, they're all gone and we're back down to raw wood and everything looks brand new again. Um, and now the wood fibers are open, so it's ready to accept the finish. Here's a little trick I learned from my contractor friend, Josh. Obviously these nail holes need to be filled, but wood filler doesn't usually take stain or finish very well, and you end up with these ugly splotches of wood putty that doesn't match the rest of the wood tones. So what I like to do is put down a base layer of stain or finish or whatever it is I'm working with first, let it dry, and then apply the wood filler after. I also wipe away any excess and surrounding wood filler with a damp rag to get as much of it off the wood as possible. I let the wood filler harden, and then I go back and touch up those tiny spots with more stain or finish. This way, I'm minimizing the area that the wood filler is in contact with the wood, so the difference in the filler and the wood tones is a lot less noticeable. I'm using Rubio Monaco to finish the stairs. It's an oil finish that was originally created for hardwood flooring, so it's super durable and the application could not be easier. It's a two-part finish, the oil and the accelerator. You mix both parts at a three to one ratio and then you spread it on, allow it to penetrate and bond to the wood fibers for a few minutes, and then you wipe off the excess with a soft cloth. Super easy and it smells good too. I allowed the finish to dry overnight, and then I went back and touched up the risers with some white paint, paying more attention to the outer edges since the majority of the stairs would be covered with the rug. Now that the necessary prep work is done, it's time for the fun part. All right, I'm about to install the rug pad, but before I do that, I wanna figure out the position of the runner so that it's centered on the stair tread. Let me show you an easy way to do that. Okay, one way to do it is obviously to measure the stair tread and measure your rug runner and then do all the math. But here's an easier way to figure this out. Just scoot your runner all the way up to the corner, get all the way to the corner here, and then you just take this measurement and then split the difference. Super easy. I use painter's tape to mark those measurements so that my runner will stay straight and centered. All right, it's all marked. And that's where the runner will go. Next, we cut the rug pad down to size and stapled one to each tread. Depending on the rug you choose, you may not need a rug pad, but I'm glad we added it because the stairs will feel so soft and cushy on our feet. Also, a rug pad isn't expensive and it takes minimal effort to install, so I'd recommend that you don't skip this step. Now we install the runner. I started from the top and worked my way down. I'm using a pneumatic staple gun with half inch staples to staple the rug just under the stair nose and at the joint where the riser meets the tread, spacing the staples about two to three inches apart. You can also do a waterfall edge where you don't wrap the rug under the stair nose, but I prefer this more tailored, tucked in look. It's looking so good already. So I'm gonna give you a close up here. I started it right under the nose tread here. And then the staples are probably about, I don't know, a couple inches apart. I'm using this 
painter's tool to tuck that so that's super tight and then stapling it down. I also colored the staples with a black Sharpie so that it was less noticeable on the rug. My friend Sherry from Young House Love showed me this trick. Then I just continued down the stairs until the rug ended. I used a total of three rugs on the entire staircase and because the rug pattern has a border, I had to cut it in certain places so that the pattern was continuous. I used scissors to cut the rug just under the stair nose and then cut off the top of the border of the second rug and stapled it right where the first rug ended. Then I just continued on down until the second rug ran out. All right, I'm almost done. I've got this last little bit to do. So I've got one more rug, but um, here's the thing. I have been working from the top down, but you see how the pattern ends right here? Obviously I'm gonna cut right under the nose here and then join the next rug, but I'm gonna work from the bottom up. I'm starting from the bottom and will work my way up because I want the border to end at the bottom of the staircase so that the entire rug looks like one long continuous rug and the pattern and the border is complete and intentional. There's also a finished seam that will be really nice to end on. Just be sure to double and triple check your measurements because you want the rugs to line up exactly with the previous one. For this last rug, I only put in three staples at each run, just in case I had to pull it back up because I somehow veered off course. Fortunately, everything lined up according to plan and so I was able to go back and add the rest of the staples. Finally, I'm adding these brass stair rods as a finishing touch. These are purely decorative and a bit pricey, but I think they add an extra level of elegance to the staircase. I used a pipe cutter to cut the brass tubing to length and then screwed the hardware onto the stairs. As always, I'll link all of the tools and materials in the description box below. And if you want more information on this project and others, be sure to visit jenwoodhouse.com. And we are done. It looks so good. Now, let's see if this project is Watson approved. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and give us a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jen Woodhouse, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> 11 year old. Oh my God. And we are done, and it looks so good. Let's see if this project is. <laughs>